Hey guys, I'm just about done recapping the grunt owl. I also found out that almost all the resistors are out of specs, so I replaced quite a few of those. Here's the way I rigged up the power resistors and electrolytics. Remember, this is just temporary until I get the set working. Once I do, I'll cut these open and restuff them and mount them back down and get all this in a bit more securely and safely. I've just got a couple paper caps left and I thought this one was kind of interesting. It's really hard to get at, uh, but look how nasty it is. I found that quite a few of the original capacitors had been replaced a long time ago. The reason I could tell that is that the originals are marked uh, Grunau on some of them and some just have a part number. Like this one just says 33760. So thank goodness the schematic has both the part number and the value. For example, this was that oddball 0.006. I was able to dig up a 0.0068 for that guy. Um, and uh, the replacement ones are pretty, were pretty much all Michael Mold caps. Well, this guy was so hard to get at. I suspect it may have even been bad when uh, the whoever else recapped this set and they just didn't bother with it. I still haven't quite got it out myself. I just cut one lead loose and the other lead is way down in there. Hopefully I can get at it. I don't want to have to unmount this whole tuning band switch here just to replace one cap. I went over the schematic again and again and I just cannot find this anywhere on it so I just left it out. It showed it going to this junction of these three resistors um, to ground, a 0 0.05 microfarad cap to ground, and it's not on here anywhere. And I've marked off all the other ones in yellow that I replaced, so <laughs> maybe it was a uh, production change, I'm not sure. There were a few others, like in the dash line here, but uh, I don't seem to have any of those components, so, uh, well, who knows. Um, so, I finished recapping the rest, uh, I'll try firing it up without that cap in the circuit and see how it works. So uh, the last thing I want to do before I flip this over is clean the controls. They're pretty oxidized under here. Well, it looks like these are silver plated contacts. This is the band switch. Got a tone switch over here. And um, uh, of course the uh, volume control down here. So I'll clean those up and then flip this back over and put the tubes back in. Okay, I've got all the tubes back in the set and a new power cord wired in. And back here is the pile of all the old components I took out of it. I also managed to wrap the cloth cord that came with this uh, back around the pulley here so it kind of works. I found a picture online of what the original belt looked like. It was sort of like a rubber o-ring that wrapped around here and this provided a, a tensioning on it. So I'll try to find something similar. So this should actually be like that so rust against it provides more pressure. I guess this is kind of serviceable, it's just that when you hit this knot, it kind of gets stuck under there. <laughs> Alright, so that leaves one last thing, and that is the speaker. The speaker is attached to this piece of plywood, which is quite warped. I'm hoping it's not warped so bad I can't get the screws out. So we got one here. A couple here, one way down in there, and a couple over here. And this whole board should come out and then I can get the speaker out. Because all the speaker bolts are on the other side going this way. That actually wasn't too hard to get out. I just needed a flat bladed screwdriver and a little muscle. Now we can see exactly how deeply the set was submerged because there's the water line. The bottom of this board came within about two inches of the bottom of the cabinet, so I'd say it was underwater a good foot. And check out how badly that plywood is split apart. 
course I'll be replacing this whole board. I unmounted the speaker from the speaker board and got it up on my workbench, plugged it in, plugged this set into a dim bulb tester with a 100 watt light bulb. And I've got it going to my ISO tap. I'll dial that in for a line voltage. Should give me about 110 going into the set. And here we go. Light bulb lit up nice and bright, but now it's dimming, dimming down. And tubes kind of lighting up. Like the uh, two output tubes, but the rectifier is not lighting up. So, this could be bad. <laughs> Let's just hope that there's uh, some kind of wiring problem or something. Worst case scenario, the filament winding, the 5 volt filament winding to this output tube is shot. Uh, but uh, let's do some testing first before we go to the worst case scenario. I pulled the tube out and cleaned the socket pins and reinserted it. Turned it back on and it still seemed like it wasn't glowing. And then I turned the lights off and looked really close and it was indeed lighting up just very dimly. So what I've done now is I've gone from a 100 to 150 watt bulb in my dim bulb tester and I increased the line voltage slightly to about 115. Now let's give this another try. I'll turn the lights off too. So hopefully you can see this. So now the, the bulb is much dimmer. And see the rectifier plates are indeed glowing. As are the other tubes. So. Well, there's a bit of noise coming out of the speaker. No idea what band I might be on. I don't have an antenna hooked up. Oh, but <laughs> I just tried tuning something. Let's see if the iTube's doing anything as such. Yeah, it is. It's really hard to see. I mean, it's not quite as bright as I thought it was. But I did get a tip that there's a, a resistor in there that should that commonly fails or is out of tolerance, so I should check that out. But it is actually varying a bit as I tune this around. Let's see. This is a tone control, I think. This is a band. I would expect in the AM band I should pick up something pretty easily even without a good antenna. So we've got some really strong stations around here. So I think when I get that large, loud static burst, that's uh, when I hit a station. It's just not, uh, it's not coming through. So, the fact that it's responding as I rotate this, I think the oscillator is probably, and then the oscillator mixer is probably working. So the problem could be one of the IF stages. Or could be in the detector. Or it could be one of these guys. I just noticed that this detector, although it has a I can't see it glowing and it's it's cold. Oh no, okay, it is glowing. It just it just probably dissipates very, very little power.
crappy thing is I have essentially no service info. All I've got is a schematic to go off of. And they don't, uh, oh, I was going to say they don't list voltages, but they do. So that's certainly one place I can start. And then there's always that one mystery capacitor I left out. But before I do any of that, I better hook up an antenna just on the off chance that I'm not picking up any stations because it's not enough to uh, pick up AM stations on an antenna hooked up. I hooked up an antenna which hasn't made really any difference so far. And then I started thinking about how the user would know what band they're on. And there's supposed to be a light back here. So I pulled on the lead and it turns out it's just loose and flopping around and the light bulb looks burned out. This, um, this metal can surrounding the dial and I believe you need to carefully bend these tabs up a bit and pull this cover off somehow. All well, these hands are in place too, but somehow you have to be able to get in there to replace the bulb. Oh, I see. Okay, there's a tab back there. And that corresponds to this, so this one's supposed to slide into that. So I'm going to see if I can find a replacement bulb and try getting that going. So at least we can get some illumination on the subject. The schematic doesn't state what kind of bulb it should be, just a part number. So I uh, just dug through my assortment of bulbs, and this is the only kind of threaded bulb I had. I think it's a number 46, so I'll put one in. And let's see what happens. Nuts. Not lighting up. Alright, let's see if there's any voltage going to that wire. Because there's also a second wire coming out here that was just wrapped with electrical tape. So I don't know exactly what that's all about. Well, I can see why this light bulb isn't lighting up. There's no power going to it. The wire that's not going to it, the one that was wrapped in electrical tape, that's got the 6.3 volts AC on it. So I don't know why in the world someone would hook this wire up and leave that one uh, disconnected. This is probably just going to ground. That's the one you want going to the bulb. So I'm going to switch those wires around and see if it lights up. All right, after a lot of cursing, I finally found where the fault lies. There is no electrical connection between this mounting bracket and the center contact pin down there. It seems like this bracket's broken loose from that uh, solder pad down there. So I'm going to try touching that up with some solder and hope that it forges a good connection. Otherwise, maybe I just need to get myself a new uh, lamp holder. It turns out that I made a very bad assumption, and that is that one of the lamp terminals was going to this mounting bracket. That's what I've seen on all the other radios I've worked on, is that one side of the lamp holder goes to the bracket, which goes to the chassis, which is ground, and you just need one hot lead going to the lamp. Well, in this case, this clamp is actually not connected to either one of them, so I had to connect that ground lead to the center pin and the hot lead to that side pin. So. Now, the lamp comes on. Okay, I've got the bulb back inside the shroud here, so now I should be able to finally see what the illuminated dial face looks like. I've also plugged the radio directly into an outlet rather than going through a dim bulb tester, because even with a 150 watt bulb, it was cutting the juice to the radio by a little bit. So, let's see if that makes any difference. So. I can finally see what this dial face looks like. That's pretty cool. Different colors. Top part's green. And we got a yellow and then a red. But when you change the bands, it doesn't. I thought it might illuminate different sections, but I guess they're always all illuminated. You're just supposed to <laughs> figure out, I guess, which dial position is which. You know, for which band. Well, I can hear something. Too. 
still some horrible static though when you hit certain things. Well, there's something. So there's certainly nothing there's certainly nothing critically wrong with this radio. I mean, you know, the power transformer is good, the speaker's good and so on. Hopefully now it'll just be a matter of fine-tuning things. I'm guessing this is one of the shortwave bands. Let's try a different band, see if we get anything. Okay, that's WGN. That's Nick DiGilio. I recognize this show. Let's see, where's the dial pointer? So this is the broadcast band down here. And WGN is AM 720. And the pointer is over here, so it seems like it's pretty far off. I would expect it to be over here. Eesh. Still horrible crashing static. So it should be one end of the AM band. Should be should be an AM560 in here somewhere. Well, that's a bit faint. Maybe I won't be able to get it. So there's a WGN again. Station. See what the iTube's doing. Yeah. It's not doing a whole lot. <laughs> so when I actually tune into a station when I can actually finally hear some audio, it's not really reacting much. Controls working. All right, so that should be AM 1000. So again, the dial pointer is off quite a bit. Maybe pretty down low. You know, it is kind of working. Just uh, if I get rid of those horrible sounds when it's going between stations. You know, maybe there are some uh, dirty contacts on the plates. I haven't really cleaned this out much. So maybe those horrible crackling sounds are from just some dirty connections on the capacitor plates while I'm rotating it. See we can find some music. That was about it for music. <laughs> so it's a bit better if I tilt the speaker up, of course, all this time. The speaker's been putting straight down into a table.
So, all in all, uh, pretty promising for a first power-up. Well, it's getting pretty late, so I'm going to call this video uh, for tonight. And um, I'll pick up uh, after I've uh, troubleshooted this a bit more.